Okay, um, chapter 10 is nothing but your standard data and its uses in balancing work. So standard data is just a term and just for any collection of time values. In definition, standard data is just a catalog and you have elements of time standards developed from a database collected over the years of motion and time study. So I give you the top part of this table and you can have the entire table uh, in your handout. So here you can see the exterior finish carpentry standard data and it's telling you everything about your labor hours. So for society, narrow lab on Bebo, you're going to spend 3.0 per 100 square feet, okay, 3.0 hours. And siding white lab on Bebo, 2.5, siding drop, 2.25, shingles on walls, 5 per 100 square feet, so on and so on. So that's your standard data. So the advantages of using standard data, okay, time standard. So I listed here from one to nine. So the very first one, is they're chosen from a book called standards. And you get this book from your past data cumulative study. So it takes about two minutes to select a standard and you compare it, what you have to that standard. And that's going to take about 30 minutes. So it's very convenient to use it. The second one is so uh, we use the standard data for time standards because they are accurate, more accurate than other time standard techniques. The third one is consistency. Okay? It's another way of saying that uh, the standard we're using is fair. And number four, time standards can be set before the production starts because you already know okay at least the standard time standard time standards it's pretty difficult to read this we're talking about the time anyway and since you already study that again and again it becomes over time and standard all right so the the fifth is your time standards for is for short duration jobs can be set economically okay totally and um we always use it because it's cheaper anyway then number six is standard data reduces the need for time study number seven time standards are easier to explain and adjust if needed number eight the cost of time standard application is greatly reduced and number nine adjustment can be made quickly if needed. Those are the reason why we're using the standard data for all of our time standards. Okay. Very good management, they're going to challenge and they always update this standard data by regularly studying, meaning like they're taking um, the motion and also motion design mostly and then your time data almost like every week or every month. Okay, that's how they update this standard. Awesome, that management is going to just be using the same thing every day. Okay, it doesn't really matter. And also, they don't do update at all. And they just use the same standard data set for like 5, 6, 10 years even. So it depends on the company. Methods of communication, standard data, time standards. So in methods of communication, we use all of this. Your graphs, your tables, your formula, your worksheets, and your machine speeds and feeds. Okay, so those are the methods of communication that we use for time standard standard data. Work there assembly line and plant balancing. You're already doing your mark mark assembly line even if you didn't know it, but you're doing it, okay? But eventually you will learn that and find that out. So your purpose is the balancing technique is a use of elemental time standard 
for the purposes from 1 all the way to 6. And the very first one is equalizing your workload among the people, okay? cells, and departments. So in our mini HR lab, we are totally dividing our workload among all the members of your group. Okay, that's exactly what you would be doing when you're managing a big group of people. It's the same thing. Okay, to identifying your bottleneck operations. So bottleneck are nothing but the operation with the most work. Then we have to establish the speed of your assembly line, and you're doing it already, but we're not perfect. And I'm seeing like some some of the operator they're waiting, okay, and the other person is doing the work. So it's kind of like your tech time is not perfect. So one tech time at one station is faster than the other, so therefore you have to wait. So anyway, in the real assembly line, we put so much effort, we pay a lot of money to be able to establish the speed of that assembly line. Okay, so determination. Another one is you uh, determine the uh, number of workstation. The same thing that we do in the lab, we determine the number of workstation and we're going with one part for one station. Okay, but that's the draft design that I give it to you. You're not supposed to be doing what I give it to you, you're supposed to be coming up with your own design, but none of the groups is doing your own design. Okay, you can actually make one person do all parts. And that's up to you. <laughs> Nobody did it. You should try it to, to see um, if your speed is going to go up. So anyway, in the real life, we determine the number of workstation. It depends on the work. Okay. And helping determine the labor cost. Again, cost is so important. Cost and cost and cost. You have to think about it all the time. How much you're paying. Okay, how much you're paying. Also, don't reduce so much, okay? So they will be very angry to uh, give a lot of work without getting anything back. So you have to give them a livable, again, livable uh, salary, a livable, uh, you know, a dollar per hour. And that's, you have to work that out together with your human resources, personal, and then your senior management and you. Establishing the percent workload of each operator. Okay. So the percent workload is nothing but it's a divided work. You also have to calculate calculate it uh, for your operator. Like I say many times, many of you will go in and just go with the flow. Go with the flow mean like uh, taking advantage of what's already been there and done. Only very few percentage is going to challenge that. Okay. So anyway, that's up to you. Okay, so the next one is information necessary for balancing an operation or plant. So the information that is necessary to balance the operation or the plant from one all the way to three. So the very first one that we do is the blueprints and the builds of materials okay, from product engineering department and they're going to tell us what needs to be done. The second one, the output required, so that's your schedule from marketing or production control is going to give you the quantity of your production. Okay? So we develop the rate of the plant. We usually say that R value and that's your rate value with what rate are you going to produce the product. Okay, And tech time of the plant from their data. And the third one is your element of time standards. And that is going to come from industrial engineering department, which is us. Right now, I don't know why they break it into uh, industrial technology. Okay, At my time, it's industrial engineering technology. So I, I believe that they're making it easier, you know, dividing the work between the engineer and the technology and separate. Also, it depends on the school, okay? So for my school, we go with industrial engineering technology. And then they have their own industrial engineering, okay? They're a pure engineer. 
and we are on the tech side of the engineering. So it's kind of a little bit different. So here is just go industrial technology. Okay. However, the foundation and basis are the same. So tell us how long each task is going to take. Okay. So these people, this department is going to give you your elements of time standards. That's what we need the information in order for us to be able to balance your operation and plant. Plant rate and tag time. So here, the plant rate, again, we use it, our value, tag time is tag time, okay? Tell the industry engineer, engineer how fast this plant is gonna go to meet that your customer demand. So every machine and operation in the plant is keyed, totally keyed to that rate. Okay, very important rate. And in our lab, the tag time is all messed up, both lines. <laughs> None of them has the same tag, they were going with their own rate. So anyway, it's all right. And our parts must be supplied at the same rate as the assembly line it uses them. Tag time is nothing but just a German expression. Germans are very, very smart, okay? They want to control the entire world and they try everything they're gonna do it all the time, even now. So anyway, Americans are also smart, but then Americans are kind of lazy. We use our uh, expert, the only one we need to use it. All the time, we you, you just lay back and stay home or whatever. So anyway, so that's, uh, and also Americans are good, okay, good in heart. So that's the differences, I think, between the uh, people here and people out there. So anyway, European people, they're not very good. They're really, some of them are really bad and very unpredictable. They have, you have no idea of what they're thinking inside of their head. So anyway, so meaning the available production time divided by the rate of customer demand. Okay, so tech time is nothing. So if you go with math, you're going to divide the production time with the rate of customer demand. Okay, so it's a rate, tech time is a rate. So here, we're going to take a look at what tech time is. The first example, so if a customer is going to demand 120 units per day, and we work 480 minutes per day. In the lab, we're doing 240 demand, and whatever time you finish is the time that you work for that day, for that shift. Okay? So our parts are very small. So even though I estimated one hour with a perfect you know, line, since we're not doing perfectly in lab, you are doing, I think, between about 30 minutes or less than that for 240. But then our parts are very small, okay, very, very little, little parts right there. So it's easier to uh, uh, assembly them. So anyways, 120 units per day in this example, and we work 480 minutes per day. So the question is asking you, what's your tech? Okay, so then we want to calculate tech time is telling you, please divide, okay, your work minutes per day by your customer demand. So we put 480 minutes per day divided by 120 units per day. So per day and per day cancel out. So you get four minutes per unit. Okay, so here are minutes, here are unit. This is a divide, division line. So therefore we use minutes per unit. Okay, so that's what you get. So that is your rate, okay? Everything that is per is a rate. So four minutes per rate, we're gonna go. Uh, sorry, four minutes per unit, we're gonna go. So meaning one unit, you have to make it in four minutes. And that's your station. That's the same as your buddy station next to you. And that's the station after that is gonna go with that rate, okay? So we need to produce one part every four minutes, every workstation. So our value is similar to this but it considers time standard. It considers performance percentages, and it also considers your allowances, okay? So that's a little bit different from tech time. Tech time is straight, only two factors right in here for us to be able to calculate that. Another example coming into R value. So for R value, your rate value is 0 0.250 minute in this example of cycle time. So what, it, what does it mean? So it means, okay, that one finished product must come on the assembly line every 0 0.250 minute, okay? 
or the plant will not produce enough product. So that's what our value means. So if I ask you what is our value, you're going to tell me that. Okay. So every other machine in operation in the plant must produce a part every 0 0.250 minute. So that is four parts per minute. Okay. 0 0.250 is for one part. So therefore, in one minute, we're going to produce four parts. Or it will be behind schedule. Okay, you'll be late. So if two parts are needed per assembly, like wheels on a bike, etc., etc., that's just an example. So the R value for that part will be 0 0.125 minutes. Okay? So you have to study in order for you to be able to know what R value is and what is your tech time and got to know the difference between that two. Okay, the next example is your workstation. So here in this example, your workstation or your machine, usually a machine is at the workstation with you or without you. This is going to take 0 0.4 minutes and your R value is 0 0.250. So how many machines would you need? You're going to take time standard. Okay, that's 0 0.4 right there. Time standard is because the same, your machine is going to take 0 0.4 minutes. That is your time standard. And then you have your R value, and that R value is 0 0.250. You're going to divide your time standard by R value. So you're going to get this. Okay, that's 1.6 stations. 0 0.4 divided by, okay, um, this actually is supposed to be a 1. Okay, 1 divided by 250 is going to give you 0 0.250. Uh, I made a mistake right now, I'll change it. But anyway, you don't have to write like that. You can write directly 0 0.250 in there, okay? And it'll give you the same thing, 1.6 stations. Plant rate calculation. Okay, for plant rate calculation, the very first one you take a look at is your production volume. That is going to come from your sales or marketing management. And then it's going to determine how many units a company can sell. And that is what you'll be producing. Again, uh, production inventory is going to control the department. And they're going to calculate how fast okay, we're going to produce. And we will consider like season, warehousing costs, training costs, manufacturing costs. Again, cost, 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 and cost. All the time you have to calculate. And my expertise is a cost analysis. I'm pretty good at analyzing data. Uh, you will be really good at it too, if you do uh, every day. And um, you will be calculating that, okay? If your calculation is bad, your floor or your plan facility or your line is going to mess up over time. We, we can't hide these things, so you have to know what you're doing. And two, the allowances in the average plant, we go by the D for 10%, okay? Some company is going to suck your blood out of you and give you only like 5% and run you so hard. So that depends on you. Anyway, the standard allowances of every company is going 10% of your operation time. Anyways, efficiency must be totally anticipated. So experience is definitely necessary because it's going to show what our efficiency rate averages are. So your efficiency of your assembly line totally depend on the experience and skills of the operators, okay, mechanics, the technicians who is going to be on that line uh, to control the line and control the technology around that line and on that line. Okay. All right. The standard element of time. So time standard for each part must be calculated before parts or elements can be combined into jobs. You have to do it before any of your parts can be combined into jobs, you have to do that calculation okay, for your standards. If you don't have it, then you have to borrow it. If you cannot borrow it, you're going to calculate it by yourself. Um, when designing a new production line, okay, designing a new production line here, I think they're building a yellow airplane here. So these times are calculated using PTS or standard data. Okay? That's your time standard, predetermined. So the name itself is already determined. So the whole predetermined time standard or 
standard data. Where did you get that? You studied that, okay? You studied that, and you get your data now analyzed by, um, by calculation. Okay, assembly line balancing. How are we gonna balance the assembly line? So from one to eight, that's what we're gonna do. The purpose of assembly line balancing technique number one. We're gonna equalize the workload among the assemblers. We're gonna identify your bottleneck operation, all the stop points. We're going to establish the speed of the assembly line, so important. We're going to determine the number of workstations, determine the labor cost of assembly and pack out, determine the establish the percent of workload of each operator. We're going to assist the plan layout. We have to know everywhere, okay, where the things are, where the operators are, where the machines are, what we're doing. So the layout got to be always updating every month and reduce the production cost, okay? So tricky company, like traditional company, when you go there, they're not going to uh, coordinate with you or working with you. And um, at that time, they're gonna give you the old layout to you intentionally, and you gotta draw on top of it by yourself. These guys have the new layout updated one, but they're not gonna share that with you, okay? That's another secret I wanna share with you. So when you go in there for the first time in experience, and these guys are, man, I tell you so many times, the manufacturing world, the industrial world is a man's world. Women don't survive there because of the nature of the woman, okay? So mostly about 80% or more than that, about 90% is men. So um, you got to play with the man's world, in the man's world, okay? Play the game with them and um they will cheat you <laughs> they won't share with you that's what men's do okay the two things a man always do is cheating and not sharing okay so you have to develop your own most of the time and try to find out to survive in such an environment okay woman well is they may be bitching you okay they may be saying something um but they share okay and they do not cheat Women's workers are more efficient than men, but they always bring animosity or drama into the professional world. And that's the nature of women. So it also depends on you when you get into the management. You have to learn all the behaviors and all the attitudes and all the nature of your employee. Okay, you're not trying to know them personally. You're trying to know them as a as an employee, okay, as a, a labor or, or your uh, crew, and uh, as an individual or person, you know, you're not directly controlling them, you're controlling the system around them. So those are the key points that you have to always remember when you enter your foot into this world. You have to be mentally strong, physically strong, and um, you have to use your brain all the time and not to get into emotional okay, uh, mode. You will never control or run the operation or processes or the people with your emotion. Okay? You have to cut that out. Don't be a woman, be a man in the, in the man's world. Even though the women are working, we have to be the man, okay? Adopt the man's attitude instead of woman's attitude because it doesn't work. It will definitely get rid of you over time. And, not the people, the system will get rid of you, okay? America is so successful in everything we do, and that's because we play with the system. We're not playing with the people. Even if you use the name of the people, okay, for the people, by the people, but actually our concentration is always the system, so meaning we're dealing with the most educated people in the whole world who know what the system is, what the component of the system is, what is the uh, processes and communication between these components are. As soon as you understand the entire system, you can control the whole thing, everything, including in that system, okay? So anyway, that is a key point uh, for our world, okay? All right, so the next one is your assembly line layout. It's just an example. We're not expecting you to draw any of it. So if you can be able to uh, look at the picture 
and be able to say, oh, that's a simply line layout, and you're good to go for this class, okay? And they all, you have all the charts, different charts already by now. So chapter, after chapter nine is an easy country because you don't really have to get into details or study anything or calculation, okay? Just a little bit of this and a little bit of that to know, that's about it. And here, the next one is your assembly and pack out line. Pack out is nothing but your shipping line. You're packing all everything that you produce in your assembly line and put it in a box or a container and pack it. And we call that pack out line. Then here's a chart in that just a uh, step-by-step step balancing form for your assembly line. A little bit different from other chart. Again, we don't have to know at all. You only have to look at it and you should know oh, that it's assembly balancing form. And here is a field form for the assembly line balance in a short try. We always have a current state. We always have an improved state for every chart and every form. Okay, two forms always. And here is your assembly line balance again, improved solution. You don't have to know any of it. You only have to understand what they're doing right there and that's about it. Here, just telling you the same thing, the operation, description, okay. And then here is all your R value, okay. And then here is everything that you have to know with your time standards. I'm going to get into it, okay. Assembly line layout, another example. And this is resulting from your assembly line balance. Layout, again, drawing the picture here is only 2D, okay. So it's pretty easy to draw. You should know by now how we draw it, and it's completely the top view. Okay, so you can see the head of the operator right there in the station. And the next one is your production. Shelled you based on producing, okay, uh, something here. So we're producing our uh, trailers. So we're doing nine trailers per day. So here you can see the production schedule based on producing nine trailers per day. I got a cut out right there. So when you take a look at it inside of that, and you're gonna see tech time, plant plant rate, okay. So this example we're going for 50 minutes in which to make nine trailers. So we must move a trailer every 50 minutes. Okay. So the following is a schedule for this tech time and plant rate production. So at 7 a.m. you're gonna do this. At 7 10 you're gonna do that. Eight so on so all the way to 3 30. Okay. And the last one is your walk cell. Your walk cell based on the previous example for trailer manufacturing. Here is your line blah 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 going okay and go this way, down, and then go that way. And these are all the feet, material, and then material flow right there, material stored here. And then fabrication is going to fat into your line, okay? So pretty much that's the work cell for your trailer manufacturing. So again, you should know when you look at it, you should be telling me, oh, that's a work cell, okay? So I'm going to give you different pictures and tell you to identify that. Okay, so that's it for chapter 10.